Mark, that's right. Right here is the elementary school, and then here is South 112th Street where the accident happened. Right here behind me, the victim was heading west. The other car was heading east, and police say they collided in the westbound lane here. The police are still investigating exactly how that happened. Meanwhile, I've learned that the 44-year-old victim who died here was a husband, a father, and a business owner. In front of Southern Heights Elementary. Lamentable lo que pasó. De esa forma, es muy triste. Walter Lopez talks about the many people who have reached out after the loss of his cousin, Carlos Racinos. Uh, really, really good. And he, he talked with me uh, every day. Monday morning, just before 8, Walter says his cousin was driving to work when his red truck was hit head on by a stolen Subaru Outback. This crash happened in front of the elementary school just before any kids arrived on campus. And that's why I'm staying here, because I come to, I can't believe it. Racinos died at the scene. Sheriff deputies say that Carlos's wife and sister-in-law happened to be passing by right after that accident. Uh, we had a chaplain respond to the scene yeah, and they've been with the family the entire time. So our thoughts and prayers are with that family. The Subaru, which was stolen yesterday, was found in the opposite lane, and deputies are still working to figure out how that happened. The driver of the stolen car was taken to the hospital with broken bones. When he's out, he'll be charged with vehicular homicide. It's a serious charge, and that's... But again, we have somebody that lost a family member and somebody that lost their life, and uh, from my understanding, he was just heading to work in the morning. Walter says his cousin has been in the community for 20 years and began a painting business just last year. He's a husband and a father of a teenage boy. It's a loss, he says, he and his family will be feeling for a long time. Good, I'm so sad because it's a big loss in the family. Now, now, we did dig into the criminal history of the 30-year-old suspect, and we found out that he did have a few traffic-related misdemeanors. However, at the time of today's accident, he was actually under probation for a felony charge of vehicular prowling. We've learned that he spent a couple weeks in jail for that charge, but then his sentence was deferred to two weeks unsupervised probation. Again, his name not being released yet by police, but we do know once he's out of the hospital, he will be facing a charge of vehicular homicide. Back to you.